I'm French and here's how I'd spend my time in Paris if I only had 48 hours to visit. Chances are you took a really long flight to come here and you know, you wanna drop your bags at a nice hotel and I'll tell you more about where to stay in a bit. But after that, you need to go have breakfast at a bakery. Don't go to an overrated hype place that's in all the guides. Just go to your local neighborhood bakery that has a long line of locals. Here you can get a few croissants, you can try a bunch of different pastries, you can have a few of the tiny espressos, you know, this will reset you up right for your day and also give you a taste of delicious French food. Then after that, I really recommend you start your day by walking around. Paris is a super walkable city. It is super dense. There's so much to see, so you will see cool stuff just by walking around anywhere you are within Paris. Also in the morning, the city tends to be pretty empty because we wake up quite late <laughs> here in Paris. It's the perfect time to just explore and see stuff. So just pick a neighborhood and walk in it. My two favorite well-known neighborhoods are Montmartre, which is super nice, especially if you go in the north, a bit away from the Sacré-Cœur. You have a bunch of little hidden gems and it's, you know, the quintessential stereotypical French vibes. But especially if you go in the north, local people actually live there. The other well-known neighborhood that you've probably heard of and that I really like is Le Marais. So Le Marais, this is where a lot of people go to buy clothes, to go shopping. And it's also a really cute neighborhood to explore because all the buildings are super old and there's also really nice squares to picnic in. Again, and both of these places are places where locals also live. And I'll tell you about my favorite local neighborhoods later when I explain where to stay. But here again, don't have FOMO, don't try to do too much. Just walk around, enjoy the atmosphere and get settled in your two-day trip. Then the other thing you need to do if you only have 48 hours in Paris is to eat. Seriously, have plans for breakfast, lunch and dinner because the food is so good. Obviously I'm biased, I'm from here, but the food is really good. My tip here is to plan at least an hour and a half for a proper proper lunch and a proper dinner so that you have plenty of time to enjoy. So I obviously like Southern French food, which is where I'm from. So here we have duck confit. We also have cassoulet, which is some kind of a heavy dish from the South. Anything that's uh, ham and cheese related, charcuterie boards, really great. Love these in France. Another one of my favorites are the galettes, which are salty crepes. And if you come during winter, you absolutely have to try raclette. If you like cheese, a raclette will be heaven for you. It's just half a wheel of cheese that's heated and that melts into potatoes. It's so good. I've personally only eaten snails when my American friends come to visit France because they want to try it. And I've never seen a French person eat French onion soup. I've only seen those in American diners. And Paris is a big city, so I recommend you don't only stick with traditional French food. There's a lot of creative French cuisine that you can find there too. And for that, I recommend you check out Le Fooding, which is a website with a lot of different restaurants. One good place to try traditional French food is at the Bouillon. And with Bob we went to Bouillon Pigalle and as you can see here with the lines it is not a hidden spot at all and it's because a Bouillon is Paris versions of fast food which means they serve simple and cheap meals to a lot of people and for starters we went with some pâté served with a slice of bread and pickles and also with oeuf mayonnaise which is just that it's just eggs with mayo and apparently it seems to be a really big thing in France because the restaurant we went to had won the egg mayo competition then we had one of my favorite French foods which is steak frites which which is basically just a beef steak served with homemade fries and pepper sauce. And we also shared a plate of pork roast with garlic potatoes and a bunch of sauce on top. And as you can see on the menu, the prices were really, really super low. So our whole meal, a starter and a main, was only 15 euros, which is around $16. Also, a lot of people who come to Paris want to see the old stuff, the buildings, the monuments, the museums. And that's great, but my advice to you is do not try to do too much. Paris is a very old city. There's a lot of old stuff, so it can be really overwhelming. You will not see all the old stuff in two days. I'm thinking especially about Le Louvre. Le Louvre tends to be what breaks people. It's so big, it's really overwhelming. Um, there's not a lot of cultural context unless you take a guided tour or you know about art history and also you won't be able to see the Mona Lisa because there's so many people so you're better off just googling it. What I recommend here is either to pick a smaller museum that has an exhibition you're interested in. My favorite big museum is Musée d'Orsay and 
here again, I recommend you just stick to one section to not be overwhelmed. Also, if it's your first time in Paris, I know you want a picture with the Eiffel Tower. And if you've been to Montmartre already, you can sit from the steps, so that might be enough for you. But, you know, as a French person, I personally didn't care about the Eiffel Tower until I met my American boyfriend, Bobby. And he's always super excited to see it, so every time I see it now, I make sure to appreciate it. And I don't personally think you should go all the way up to the top of the Eiffel Tower, but, you know, don't listen to me. I've only been there once when I was a kid, like every French person. But one thing is, if you are at the top of the Eiffel Tower, you don't see the Eiffel Tower. So there's better places that are free where you can get a good view of Paris. Also, it's super overwhelming. There's a big line and big crowds. And if you're like me and you hate crowds, just see the Eiffel Tower from a safe distance just across the river. Okay, so by now you've ticked one or two of your most important things to see and it's time for the fun part, which is experiencing Paris. So you see, Paris is super beautiful, but it's not a museum. It's an actual city where people live and there's so many fun things to do. And if you take one thing out of this video is I want you to experience Paris rather than just seeing things as a consumer. And before I tell you all about how to experience Paris like a local, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online therapy service that's available worldwide from anywhere you are. They've been a long-term sponsor of the channel and I really love working with them because I personally use online therapy and it has helped me so much in feeling more balanced mentally and also handling big life transitions like a few months ago when we decided to move back to Paris after traveling the world full-time for two years. So I really recommend doing online therapy whether you're going through a tough time or just need a little bit of extra support. BetterHelp makes makes that really easy. You just answer a few questions about yourself and they'll match you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen to you and give you helpful and unbiased advice. Then you can plan video sessions and message your therapist as much as you want. And everything is fully online, so it's really convenient and the easiest way to talk to a therapist since you don't even have to leave your home to do so. To start taking care of your mental health with better help, visit betterhelp.com slash Lucille or choose Lucille during sign up to get a 10% discount on your first month. So the first thing you need to do to re-experience the city is to chill a bit and not overpack your schedule. We recommend you travel a bit more slowly and you know, maybe if it's sunny, you can go to a park, have a little bit of a picnic, read a book. And a few of my favorite parks in Paris are Jardin du Luxembourg, so the Luxembourg Garden. And it's a very tiny park that's really, really beautiful. It's right next to the French Senate and it has these public chairs that you can move around and sit on. A really beautiful fountain and really great opportunities for people watching. Then the other park I recommend, this one is one of my favorite secrets of Paris. So you've probably seen Place des Vosges in every guide. It's a very well-known square, but there's a secret passage at the corner of Place des Vosges. And from there, you can arrive to a really cute courtyard that's linked to a castle. And it's super quiet and it's a welcome break from all the people and noise of Le Marais neighborhood. Then of course, I love Parc des Batignolles. It's one of my favorites. I've spoken about it many times. It's super cute. There's a river, there's docks, there's really cute benches. You know, what else can you ask for? And the other thing you should absolutely do if you want to have a more relaxed Paris experience experience is to go to a local coffee shop. So you've probably seen the typical French cafes which look like this. And you know, these are cool if you really enjoy a high energy, upbeat atmosphere. And of course, people watching, which is a national sport here in Paris. But for me, I prefer something that's a bit more relaxed and I love hanging out at coffee shops in local areas since they tend to be a bit smaller and more chill. I really like this one in particular called Café Doz, which is right next to Parc des Batignolles I was telling you about. So a cool thing about French cafes is that you can stay almost as long as you want. People will not kick you out as soon as you're done with your drink unless there's a really long line of people waiting for your seat. And you know, speaking of local neighborhoods, let me tell you a few of my favorites that I recommend if you want to rediscover the local life and maybe the French culture. And by the way, if you go there, don't feel intimidated. You know, Paris is super touristy and of course people can tell you're not from here. But you know, in these local neighborhoods, no one cares because we are not overwhelmed with the crowds of people because simply tourists don't go there. So we are not annoyed with you at all if you come see us there. And also most people will even help you have a good time. Just remember, if you talk to a random person, just say hello and smile so that people don't think you're scary or rude. So here are my favorite neighborhoods. Obviously Batignolles, I constantly speak about it. I love, 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 love this area. It's super under the radar. It's super cute. There's so many cute bars and shops and restaurants and it almost feels like a little village. Another area I really like is Père Lachaise, which is around the 
famous cemetery you've probably heard of, but also a really relaxed neighborhood with a lot of food from different cultures and a really cute village feel as well. Then if you have a bit of a higher budget and you really value walking everywhere, you want to be staying in the north of the Marais area. So here you really get the best of both worlds because you can walk up north to Belleville and the 11th arrondissement with a bunch of really cool bars and restaurants and a really cool nightlife as well. You can also walk south to Le Marais and all of the historic center of Paris. So this area is not a hidden gem by any means. People know about it. It has been cool for a very, very long time, but I feel it's a great mix between being local and having a lot of things to do in the area. And speaking of transportation, your goal should be to walk as much as you can. It's so fun to walk around in Paris and Paris is pretty dense, so you can easily walk from one point to another in half an hour. Also, everything is so old and beautiful and you're guaranteed to find some hidden gems on your walks. If you can't walk, just go ahead and take the metro. It goes everywhere, it's cheap, it's pretty safe and it's just one of the easiest ways to move around Paris. And I have a bit of advice for you if you want to make sure you really enjoy your 48 hours in Paris. I really recommend you spend a chill evening doing a very French thing called an apéro. An apéro just means you're gonna have a drink and a bit of food to share with people you love and you're just gonna talk for hours on end without looking at the time or thinking you need to do anything after this. And by the way, if you don't drink alcohol, there's so many fun and artsy activities you can do in Paris instead. Like with my boyfriend Bobby, we went to this ceramic painting cafe where we painted our own cup and we're terrible at it, but had a really, really fun time. And this is what I personally love the most about Paris. Like you can really take time to be fully present with the people you love and just have a good time without feeling you need to be anywhere else. And that's all for me today. And if you like this video, you should watch this one or this one. I'll see you there.